it's not actually the best in terms of yeah there you go perfect definitely we'll have to do that there although we can't really see it very well can we we'll be here all right guys so yeah i'm actually on both now actually so right as always you're going to choose a b c or d uh, and then we'll see what the answers actually are i'll figure out a way on this one doing this better all right question number one is what information should you share if you're involved in a collision that causes damage to another vehicle a b c or d is it your occupation and reason for your journey your national insurance number your name address and vehicle registration number or your internet service provider <laughs> a b c or d what do you think the answer is then really really easy on this one a b c or d guys Uh, all right, I'm seeing a lot of C answers coming through, which is good. C, not silly, C, I meant to say. So your name, address, and vehicle registration documents is absolutely correct. Um, yeah, so if you're involved in a, in a collision, in an accident or something, um, yeah, the, the, you know, you don't need to give your name, your occupation, your national insurance number. That's nothing to do with an accident. Your internet service provider, we know that's just a silly answer really there, isn't it? Yeah. So C is the correct answer. Your name, address and your vehicle registration number. And then you provide those details to your insurance company. Or if the other per party is giving you those details, you provide that to your insurance company and they'll be able to actually deal with that that way. Yes. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. So let's click um, forwards or next and go into the question number two. You're approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the traffic lights have failed? Okay. Be prepared to sharp, break sharply to a stop. Break and stop only for large vehicles. Be prepared to stop for any traffic or break sharply to a stop before looking. Okay. Pitch some, a few silly ones on there as well. A, B, C or D on this one. A, B, C, or D. I see Ish is on, uh, watching it live on YouTube as well. So is, is it Goat Goat Edits? Hi, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, a, B, C, or D on this one. I can see lots of Cs coming through. Prepare to stop for any traffic. Let's th let's break them down as well. Obviously, think which is going to be the safest option on here. Uh, you're approaching a crossroads. If the traffic lights aren't working, if they're failed, you know, you're, not, you're never really going to break sharply. So A is saying, be prepared to break sharp to a stop. Why would you want to break sharp? You know they're not working. Prepare for that. Break and stop only for large vehicles. We know that's also a silly answer uh, because you're not going to break and stop only for large vehicles. What if it's a small vehicle? What if it's a cyclist? What if it's a pedestrian about to cross the road? Break sharply to a stop before looking. Again, that is not a safe option, is it? Yes, not a safe option. So we know be prepared to stop for any traffic. C is the correct answer on this one, yeah? C is the correct answer. Again, guys, if you're not really sure, you can click on that hint just there as well. <coughs> so... People are still asking what this app is. It's the four in one theory app. The link is in my bio. I'll actually put a link down on um, in the description in a bit as well. Uh, so you can actually get this app. It's a brilliant app, really, really good app. All right, so prepare to stop for any traffic. Let's click next. Question number three is what's most likely to increase fuel consumption? So again, pick out the keywords in the question. What's most likely to increase fuel consumption? Is it poor steering control, staying in high gears, accelerating around bends or harsh braking and accelerating a b c or d guys what do you think what do you think on this one is i can see lots of d's coming through on the on the <clears throat> on the chats um let's see rahat saying d is surgic saying d are you be saying d david david is saying d uh anjali saying d as well uh satwan to saying d vicky saying d ali has just said c though Mm, let's have a look. So, what's most likely to increase fuel, uh, fuel consumption? Yeah, the most. Yeah, mo most likely by looking at. I mean, most of them actually will. Poor steering control, maybe some, not so much. Staying in high gears, probably not because you're in a higher gear. Um, obviously, the lower the gear, the more fuel you're going to use. Accelerating, accelerating around bends could not. It could also be unsafe to do that as well. Uh, harsh braking and harsh accelerating would make the most common sense answer on this, wouldn't it, yeah? So we're going to go with D. A lot of you are actually saying D. <coughs> uh, Riff, so can we see the hint, please? Yeah, of course you can. Let's click on the hint button. So accelerating and braking gently and smoothly will help to save fuel and reduce wear on your vehicle. 
this makes it better for the environment too. So yeah, we know that's the correct answer, yes? So um, harsh braking and accelerating is likely to increase fuel consumption. So you want to brake nice and early. You want to accelerate nice and gently as well. Well, not too gently, but you know what? Without over accelerating, without, without driving too fast and slow, yes? If you don't know, guys, uh, I can see lots of IDKs in the, in the, on the screen. That's absolutely fine. They're perfectly f fine to do. I will explain it. It's not a problem. There we go. Right, let's click on uh, next and click to question number four is, what should you do when you're following a learner driver who stalls at a junction? <clears throat> Start to rev your engine if they take too long to restart. Stay very close behind and flash your headlights. Be patient as you expect them to make mistakes or immediately stay around them and drive on. What's the safest option? Okay, what should you do when you're, when you're following a learner driver who stalls at a junction? Now, guys, we've all been learners once. I think most of you on my, on my lives right now are still at the learning stage. I mean, most of you are still doing your theory test, so yeah, definitely you are going to be at the learning stage still. So let's think how you feel if, um, you know, you stalled and somebody's going to be behind you, um, stressing you out. <clears throat> I mean, what I normally say to all my pupils is, guys, if you stall, don't worry about it, Okay. Try to ignore the vehicles behind you. Don't stress. Don't be stressed about them waiting. You pick yourself back up, start the car back up and move away. Concentrate on what you need to do, yeah? So I can see lots of Cs coming through on this on the screen. Be patient as you expect them to make mistakes. That's exactly what you should be doing. Goat Edits is saying C as well. Uh, Ayesha is saying C for cat. Yep, perfect, excellent. Uh, this one's actually quite an easy one, isn't it, yeah? Uh, don't rev your engine. Don't stay very close. Don't flash your headlights. Uh, immediately stay around them and drive on. Um, that's a possibility, but the best thing you should do is be patient as you expect them to make mistakes. Easy. Right, question number five. Which colour follows a green signal at a puffin crossing? Ah, this might throw a few people off. Which colour fo follows the green signal at a puffin crossing? Steady red, flashing amber, steady amber, or flashing green, A, B, C, or D? <coughs> Let's have a look what we've got people saying here. Jack is saying C, Joe is saying C, Ruth is saying C, David is saying C, Rahat is saying C, uh, Patois is saying Steady Amber, Sean is saying C as well, uh, Yulub is saying Why is Steady Amber? Right, let's think, what do you normally get after a green light? What colour will you normally always get after a green light? There's, this one's almost a trick question, almost is a trick question. Yeah, Steady Amber. You thought somebody thought red, steady amber, yeah. <coughs> uh, steady amber, yeah. Steady amber is going to be the correct answer again. Let's look at the hint. There's lots of incorrect answers coming through. I can on the screen. I can see that. Um, so I'm also live on TikTok as well as um, YouTube as well. So let's look at the hint. Puffing crosses have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic light signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. Yeah? So it's treated like a normal set of traffic lights. You don't have the flashing amber. It will go to solid amber and then back to solid red. Okay? Easy as that. Uh, Benjamin asking, what app is this? It's the 4-in-1 Theory app. The link is in my bio. Uh, you can download it. And I'll also put the link in the description as well uh, for YouTube Live in a moment. <coughs> Okay, let's click on next. I think most of you are saying C, we're gonna go with C. Question number six is, you're driving with your front fog lights switched on. What should you do if the fog has cleared? Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Flash them to warn oncoming traffic that it's foggy. Leave them on if other drivers have their lights on or drive with them on instead of your headlights. A, B, C, or D. I can see lots of A's coming on the screen. <coughs> um, Aisha or goats, what do, what do you reckon? What's the, what's the answer going to be on this one? A, B, C, or D. You're driving with your front fog light switched on. What should you do if the fog has cleared? A lot of you saying A. Yeah, switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Uh, Aisha is saying uh, A for Apple. Good. Uh, oh, Aisha said C first. No, actually, that's probably this uh, previous one. Uh, A for Apple. Yeah. Um, yeah, makes sense. Isn't it? As soon as the fog is cleared, guys, and your visibility is, you know, not reduced down to 400 meters, then yeah, switch your fog lights front and rear back off. You can leave your headlights on. That's absolutely fine. As long as they're on your dipped beam, yeah? 
Okay, right. So we're going to click on next. Um, yeah, we've got the correct answer on this one. I just have to double check. Question number seven is, what must you do if poor health affects your driving? Inform your local police. Always drive accompanied. Inform the licensing authority or avoid using motorways. A, B, C or D, guys. What do you reckon it's going to be? A, B, C or D? <clears throat> All right, I can see lots of C's coming through as well. Um, Aisha is saying C. Charlotte, Naz all saying C. Uh, Jennifer, C, C and C. Uh, we're still saying C. Someone just asked, why not B? Um, always drive accompanied. Well, you know, that doesn't, how will that help you if your poor health is affecting your driving? How will being accompanied affect you? So the first thing you need to do is, like most of you are saying C, is inform the licensing authority. They'll then decide whether you should be allowed to drive or not. It depends on what, um, what you know, what the actual health issue that you have that would affect your driving is. It could differ from thing to thing, like if it's diabetes or heart problems or eyesight problems, hearing problems or a disability. It could be anything. It could be anything, yes? <clears throat> so, yes. So, C is the correct answer. Again, let's look at the hint. You must tell the DVLA or D DVA in Northern Ireland if your health is likely to affect your driving to, uh, ability to drive. The licensing authority will investigate your situation and then make a decision on whether you're fit enough to drive safely. Easy. There is, so C, inform the license and author is the correct answer. Good, let's quick, let's, uh, Lilla, let's move on to question number eight. What's the national speed limit on a single carriageway road? Is it 60, 50, sorry, let me click the run, 50, 70 or 40? What's the national speed limit on a single carriageway road? This should be quite easy, guys. Let's think what are the two speed limits that you get on a national speed limit, as in the maximum speed you're allowed to do, and um, let's see what the answer is. Right, Aisha saying 60 on a single. Quite a few of you saying A. You're pretty much all saying A, actually. A or 60, you're saying. Ryan is saying 60. Charlotte is saying A. Uh, user 9379 just said 50, though. So think what are the two speed limits for that person that just said it. What's the two speed limits on a national speed limit? Is it, well, is, is it going to be 50? Is 50 even in there? You're pretty much all saying 60. A for Apple, we're going to go for that. It's the correct answer. Single carriageway is a 60. Dual carriageway with a central reservation is 70. So it's not, it's, not, it's not 50 and it's not 40. Okay, right, let's click on 60. Let's click on next. Question number nine is you're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle? To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake, to leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back, to get the best view of the road ahead, or to offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. A, B, C, or D on this one. So I think um, I can see lots of C's coming through. Uh, Hana saying C, uh, Sabah saying A, C, Mariah, Mariah saying C, Fatih UK saying C, David saying C, TJ Man, Rahat, uh, M and H, Nada, you're all saying C, Ayesha is also saying C over on YouTube. So Ray is saying C, yeah, pretty much all saying C, yeah. C is the correct answer to get a best view of the view ahead, yeah? Of the road ahead, even, shall I say. Okay, question 10. Is you're driving along a wet road, how can you tell if your vehicle's tyres are losing their grip on the surface? Again, pick up the keywords. You're driving on a, along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tyres are losing grip on the surface, okay? Wet road will be a keyword here. The steering will feel very light. <clears throat> the steering will feel very heavy, the engine will stall, or the engine noise will increase. A, B, C, or D on this one, guys. What do you think the answer is? Break it down. Break the questions down. Break the answer down. Pick up the keywords and all of that. And then you should have your answer because it all it just all make common sense. Mariah said A. Uh, sorry, so I'm not sure. Angel is saying D. Jennifer said me thinks it's A. Um, TJ Man saying A, Danger saying D. Right, there's lots of mixed questions coming on this one. Let's actually look at the hint on this one. Lots of mixed answers, sorry, say not questions. Let's look at the hint. <clears throat> if you drive at speed in very bad conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. There's our answer. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and are floating on the surface of the water. Uh, this is known as aquaplaning. 
reduce speed, but don't brake until your steering wheel returns to normal. Yeah, if, you, if anyone's ever um, uh, experienced aquaplaning, it's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice at all. When you're actually driving and uh, you hit a puddle, you can't believe it or not, it's actually lifted off the ground. It's lifted off the ground. You, your wheels are not touching the road at all. Hence why your steering becomes very light. Yeah. So we know A is the correct answer on it. I can see lots of A's coming through. Yeah. Adam Cooper's an aquaplane. It's horrific. It's not very nice at all, is it? It's very scary because you have zero control of your car until the wheels land on ground again. Once your wheels are back on ground, which might, it might take a split second. It might be a second. Yeah. But it feels like a lifetime when it does happen. It's not nice. It's not a nice feeling. Okay, let's click next. The steering will feel very well. We know from the hint that that is the correct answer. Question 11 is, what helps to reduce traffic bunching on a motorway? Variable speed limits, lane closures, contraflow systems, or national speed limits, A, B, C, or D. What helps to reduce traffic bunching on a motorway? This is normally on a smart motorway, actually, on a smart motorway. We spoke about smart motorways a bunch of times on these lives. Um, Naz is saying A. What's A? Variable speed limits. Yeah. Uh, Peter is saying A. Uh, Aoife is saying A as well. Privs uh, is saying A. Um, again, lots of A's coming through. Right, we're going to go for A. Uh, Aisha says it sounds scary. It is. It is scary. So normally, if you got, if you know you're coming up to a puddle, just ease off the gas pedal. But don't brake. If you do aquaplane, never slam on your brakes. Never do that. Uh, right, let's click on A. If you want to see, have a look. Click on the hint as well. Congestion can be reduced can be reduced by keeping traffic at a constant speed. At busy times, maximum speed limits displayed on the overhead gantries. These can be varied quickly depending on the amount of traffic. By keeping to a constant speed on busy sections of motorway, overall journey times are normally improved. So yeah, variable speed limits does make sense. <clears throat> Question number 12 is, what colour are the reflective stones along the left-hand edge of the motorway? What colour are the reflective studs along the left-hand edge of the motorway? Are they red, amber, oops, amber, white or green? A, B, C or D? Now, I know, guys, a lot of the time here, <clears throat> everybody gets really confused with the, uh, the studs on the motorways. Everybody gets confused, but it is on one of my last TikTok, uh, sorry, my last YouTube videos as well, actually. Um, on this on this uh, theory test, uh, and I actually break it down a little bit more. So let's have a look. The caveat is saying A, uh, Ali saying red, uh, somebody says amber, a few of you saying A, quite a few of you saying A actually. Uh, Flavi saying C, uh, Peter said red beside the hard shoulder and the carriage vein. There you go, red, let's see red, a lot of red answers there. Yep, there you go. Lo see lots of red coming through. Right, okay, we're going to go with red on this one. Again, if you're not sure, you can look at that hint as well. Question 13 is, it's very windy. What should you do if you're behind a motorcyclist who's overtaking a high-sided vehicle? Keep close to the motorcyclist. Keep well back. Stay level with the motorcyclist or overtake the motorcyclist immediately. Keywords are, it's very windy. Now, that's a big clue as to what you should and shouldn't do. What should you do if you're behind a vehicle, sorry, a motorcycle who's overtaken a high-sided vehicle? This one's actually common sense, isn't it? Yeah, I can see somebody saying it's actually common sense. It's for safety as well. Think what makes the most common sense answer and which is the safest option as well. Okay, which is the safest option? I'm seeing lots of Bs coming through on the screen. Lots of Bs. Naz is saying B. Pribs is saying B. M and H is saying B. Withdraw confirm says B. Uh, B for Baz says Pribs. <laughs> well done. Yago says B. Amma says B as well. Uh, yep, you're all saying B. Wonderful, excellent, good. Thanks for all the new followers as well, guys. If you like what I'm doing, how I'm helping you, and you and you sort of really understanding the questions, how I'm breaking it down, uh, click the follow button, click the subscribe button, uh, and you'll see plenty more content coming through like this as well, guys. Thank you very much. Right, so Adam Cooper is also saying B. Let's go with B. Keep well back. It makes common sense, really, because you know here the motorcycle is also already overtaking a high-sided vehicle, i.e., a lorry. Yeah, you don't want to be overtaking the motorcycle when he's already overtaking somebody else. Yeah, keep well back. Simple as that. Safest option. There we go. Switch my pencil on. Right, okay. Question 14 is, what must you do if your ability to drive is impaired during a period of illness? Okay, your driving is impaired. 
your ability to drive is impaired, shall we say, during a period of illness. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. <clears throat> Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. Take smaller doses of any medicines or see your doctor each time before you drive. A, B, C, or D. Again, this one's about common sense, isn't it, yeah? B, <laughs> Jennifer says B for the Baz. <laughs> Charlotte says B, Pribs. Uh, Sam is saying B. Vahana is saying D. Adam is saying B, though. Uh, Vahana, why would you want to see a doctor each time before you drive? If, you, if you're unfit, don't drive at all. It's the safest option, isn't it? So that even if you see a doctor, you're still going to take the medicine, aren't you? So D wouldn't be the correct answer. Take all the medicines when, with you when you drive? Probably not a good idea, but look at the question. What must you do if your ability to drive is impaired during a pill of illness? Your, your vision is still going to be impaired. You're still not, you know, um, focusing or concentrating properly, are you? So, you know, that's not really right. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. I see a lot of people saying B's on the screens, which is great. We are going to go with B, yeah? Jay says a pass full time with full marks. Excellent. Well done, Jay. B, lock it in, says Preves. Let's go for B. Question 15 is, when are you allowed to park in a parking bay for disabled drivers? Is it when you have an advanced driver certificate, when you have a wheelchair, when you have a blue badge, or when you have an adapted vehicle? A, B, C, or D? Again, this is actually um, a very easy one. It's about common sense. When can you? Uh, when are you allowed to park in a disabled bay? Is praising me the answer. Right, a lot of you saying blue badge. So saying C, a few of you saying D, B though, actually. Uh, Aisha is saying uh, a blue badge, yeah. C, lock it in. C for common sense, says Jennifer as well. Yeah, makes sense. So when you've got a blue badge, you can actually park in a disabled bay. That's absolutely fine as long as the, the badge it belongs to you. <clears throat> okay, question 16 is you're driving in town. Why should you be careful if there's a bus at a bus stop on the other side of the road? The bus bar might have broken down. The bus might remain stationary. The bus might move off suddenly. Or pedestrians might come from behind the bus. A, B, C or D on this one, guys. A, B, C or D. Which one the answer? Think safety. I can see lots of Ds coming through on the screen. Fatty saying D. Rani saying D, I think she said as well. Jenna saying D. TJ Man saying D. Aisha saying also saying D. Nada saying C. The bus might move slowly, which it might do. Yeah, it might do, but more importantly, the bus has stopped, yeah? So we really want to worry about if is a pedestrian going to walk out from behind the bus? You're not going to see them, they're not going to see you. There's a big chance of an accident happening there. So we know the answer, safest thing here, um, the, the answer on this will be D. Pedestrians might come from behind the bus, yeah? And it does happen, and it's scary when it does actually happen, yeah? Uh, okay, so let's lock that in, and uh, let's click next. Question 17, we're almost there, guys. You're invited to a pub lunch. What should you do if you know that you'll be you'll have to drive in the evening? Avoid mixing your alcoholic drinks. Eat a hot meal with your alcoholic drinks. Don't drink any alcohol at all or have some milk before drinking alcohol. A, B, C, or D. Again, think common sense and safety. This one is more about safety. C for correct, C for cat, C for common sense. That's what I was seeing on the screen. Anisha is saying C as well. <coughs> Over on YouTube, Anisha is saying C, Anna is saying C. Or have virgin cocktails. Uh, C for church, C for cats. I'm liking all the acronyms coming through here. <laughs> it's great. Uh, right, C is the answer, isn't it? Yeah, don't drink any alcohol at all. It would make sense. Avoid alcohol as well. Who just said that? Um, Shalim is saying avoid alcohol. C for car. Right, good stuff. Okay, so drink, don't drink any alcohol at all. Easy one on that one. Question 18 is you're about to drive your car. <clears throat> what should you do if you can't find the glasses you need to wear? Borrow a friend's glasses and use those. Drive home at night so the lights will help you. Drive home slowly, keep into quiet roads or find a way of getting home without driving. A, B, C or D. If you need your glasses to drive... You need your glasses to drive. <laughs> if you don't have them, then you can't see. Yeah? Uh, who just said C? Let's have a look there. Who just said that? Who just said C? Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Oh, it's just gone. It's gone so fast off my screen. No, I, I can't say who just said C. Right, Lottie's saying D. Aisha's saying D as well. Um, 
Okay, yeah, pretty much D, isn't it, yeah? Find a way of getting home without driving if you, you don't have your glasses, which means you can't see signs, road markings. Uh, another thing, drive up at night so that the lights will help you. That's that's probably a bad answer. It is a bad answer because if you if you need your glasses, nighttime will, will, will reduce your visibility, won't it? It'll, it won't make your eyesight any better. The lights are going to start foc out of focusing everything, so that's even worse at nighttime. Never drive at nighttime if, if you don't have your correct glasses, which is a find a way of getting home without driving is the answer. Uh, somebody says, what about C? No, nope. drive home slowly, keep into quiet roads. What if you don't have quiet roads? What if they're all really busy roads? Yeah, is the safest option is find a way of getting home without driving. Don't drive unless you've got your correct eyesight, your gla glasses even. What should you do as you approach this cyclist? What should you do as you approach this cyclist? Look at the picture. What's he approaching? What's he telling you? And so on. Try to overtake before the cyclist gets to the junction. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. Rev your engine so the cyclist knows you're following behind. Or flash your headlights at the cyclist. A, B, C or D, guys. A, B, C or D. Right, I can see lots of Bs coming through. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. It would make the most common sense answer, wouldn't it, yeah? The most common sense answer on this one. <coughs> B for Bieber. Lolly saying B on this one. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. Ayesha is saying B as well. Peter saying B. Zeno is saying B. Um, right, guys, if you like how I'm explaining things, how you're getting on with this, click the follow button, click the subscribe button, uh, and there's going to be plenty more content coming through. Uh, help you with your theory tests, your driving tests, and so on as well. So, yeah, if you've got any questions, just ask away. But click that follow button there right now. Uh, Demi, thanks for the follow. Leash, thanks for the follow. Um, lots of people following here. Yeah, that's what I would like to see. Many, many more people subscribing as well. Yeah, keep getting, get, keep going. Up. Right, so B is the correct answer on this. Again, if you don't know, you can click this little hint button here. And on this app, it actually gives you the hint. It pretty much gives you the answer, to be fair. Okay, what does this sign mean? Question 20, we're on the last question. What does this sign mean? Does it mean minimum speed 30, end of maximum speed, end of minimum speed, or maximum speed 30? Okay, so guys, look at the shape of the sign. Look at the colour of the sign. And then look at the content of the sign. And that gives you your answer. Shape, colour and content. I can see lots of C's coming through. End of maximum speed limit. Right, lots of B's coming through, actually. Jay is saying B. Louise is saying C, though. Uh, someone says, I don't know. If you don't know, that's absolutely fine. Uh, Aisha is saying end of minimum speed limit. Oh, okay. Okay, Aisha. Um, previously saying maximum will be red. Correct. Correct. Okay, guys. So we know on this one, um, this is actually, it's a, it's a sign for a minimum speed limit. Okay, a minimum speed limit. Let's see if I can actually find it in uh, on these um, cards as well. If I can actually squeeze in here somehow. Uh, if I can actually see it. Okay, so that's your normal speed limit sign, yeah? That's very different to that. So that's telling, that's your 40, that's telling that's the maximum speed you can do. The maximum speed, okay? Can I see the other one? There it is. Is there another one there? There, in fact, that's the one we want, isn't it? Yeah? So that's telling you it's the minimum speed limit. Minimum you should be doing. The blue sign in the 30 is the minimum you should be doing. So when you see that, you know it's the end of the minimum speed limit. Yeah, if you just look at the back of the cards. End of minimum speed limit requirement. There you go. Okay. If you want these cards, I'll link. I'll leave a link in the uh, description as well. Uh, if you want these flash cards, they're very, very, very good cards. Uh, you get loads of cards on this. Uh, lots of signs, road markings, and everything. And all the answers uh, to the signs are on the back of back of them as well. Easy, easy. <clears throat> and I'll show people on TikTok where that where you can get those cards from in a moment as well. Okay. Right. So we're going to go for C. End of minimum speed limit. End of minimum speed limit. Okay, so um, Marius, I'll show you the uh, I'll show you those cards in a minute um, where we can where you can get them from. Okay, so uh, let's click finish. What do you reckon the answer? Uh, what what scores do you think we guys got? Do you think we got twenty out of twenty, or do we get less? Yes, this blue sign is for minimum speed. Yeah, if it's the circle sign with the red border, that's the maximum speed. Like I just showed you on the cards. Yeah. Okay, let's click finish. Let's have a look. Easy, 20 out of 20. It's going to be 20 out of 20, wasn't it, really, yeah? This is what you've got to do, guys. This is how you're going to break the questions down. Um, pick up the key words in those questions. 
<clears throat> and um, and then think about the answers as well. Then think about the answers, okay? We're going to do a bit more explanation in a second on this as well. <clears throat> so stick around, guys. If you like what I'm doing, click the follow button, click the subscribe button over on YouTube as well. Um, ask any questions, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a comment on these as well, and, and so on. Right, guys, any questions right now? Any questions? All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, end the live over on um, on YouTube as well. So guys on TikTok, just stay on for a little bit longer. I'm going to end the live over on YouTube so in a second. So guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing along. We've got 20 out of 20, as Isha says. Um, this this live will go up. I'll, put, I'll fill in the description. I'll put the links uh, to the cards and uh, the link to this app on there in a bit as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.